Hi everyone. So we completed memorizing Hebrews chapter two. So today we'll give a today I'll give a short summary of uh, Hebrews chapter two. So you you can utilize this time to memorize the entire chapter. Not memorize, recall the entire chapter because we were memorizing one verse at a time. So today you can uh, recall the entire chapter. So it has got eighteen verses. So today is a revision day. So same we did for chapter one also. It has got fourteen verses and. one day we summarized and uh, we revised it so same for chapter 2 also today is the revision day so i'll give a quick summary of chapter 2 and you can recall and memorize it so with this we completed hebrews chapter 2 so i'll just give a short summary of hebrews chapter 2 the first part if you see verses 1 to 4 it is warning to pay attention so here the author is exhorting us to pay attention to the voice of god who is speaking to us right so if you see in the old testament time god was speaking to us through prophets but in the new testament time or in the present age god is speaking to us through his son so we should pay attention or we should pay closer attention so here the book of, in the author of the book of hebrews says therefore we must pay the closer attention to what we have heard lest we drift away from it for if the message declared by angels was valid and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation right he is telling us it's difficult to escape if we neglect such a great salvation because god the son hmm, god is speaking through his son right so we shouldn't neglect that so first part of it that is verses 1 to 4 is an exhortation to uh, pay attention so the heading is warning to pay attention so hebrews chapter 2 verses 1 to 4 so we'll read at the end and next part uh, it is divided into two parts first is warning to pay attention second part it is verses 5 to 18 here we see exaltation through suffering so this is a beautiful explanation of incarnation of jesus so here we see that the second person of the trinity god the son who is equal in dignity with the father who is equal or consubstantial with the father he has taken our human form and elevated our dignity to a new level he has come down as human the infinite god god who is infinite holiness god who is infinite majesty has come down as a human being right so he has taken our flesh and blood he has taken our very hu- human nature right our very own nature and he has become a man and he is calling us his brethren hmm? to he is he is sharing in our flesh and blood that's why he is telling i am not ashamed to call them brethren hmm? he is calling us his friends he is calling us his brethren why he has taken the human form because god in his uh, god jesus as god cannot experience suffering and death right so it was his father's will that he should come as a human and he should experience that suffering and death so that he can become a faithful high priest who can sympathize with the suffering of people right so he has experienced all the suffering he has experienced the death so he can experience our suffering he can sympathize with us so through his suffering and death he has ob- he has obtained salvation for us so the main purpose for jesus coming down is the is to obtain salvation for the mankind but at the same time he is sharing in our flesh and blood so he has experienced all our emotions he has experienced our pain he has experienced our suffering he has experienced our death in his human nature he has experienced all of that as god he cannot experience any of that right so he's come down as human and experienced all of that and he died as a sacrificial lamb on calvary hmm? even so he was in the human form he was he didn't have any sin within him right so he was perfect that is why he is called second adam in the first adam was sinless right he was created perfectly after creating god, adam god said it is good god was very happy with his creation he said let us create man in our own image and likeness out of love he has created us in his own image and likeness he has created us and after creating adam god said it is good but so first adam was in a perfect state so he had complete dominion over the creation right over the earth and all the creation 
Hmm? But he fell from that state of grace. He lost that perfection, right? And we are all descendants of Adam, right? So we have that sinfulness in us. We have the temptations or we have the sin within us. But Jesus, even though he is in the human form, even though he shared our flesh and blood, he never sinned. He experienced all the suffering. He had all the temptations, but he remained faithful. He never sinned. That is the difference between us and Jesus, right? So that is why he is called the second Adam. So only a perfect man can do the expiation of the sins, right? So that is why father asked the son to come down. In obedience, Jesus has come down. Out of love, he has come down. Out of love, he has assumed our human nature. He has assumed our humanity, right? But his humanity is a holy humanity, right? That is why he can reconcile us with God the Father. Hmm? The humanity or the human kind has gone away from God. Jesus has come and reconciled the world with the Father through his suffering and death on Calvary. So the second part tells about that exaltation through suffering. So here first part we see what is man that you are mindful of him or the son of man that you care for him. You made him for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor putting everything in subjection under his feet. So he has made Jesus in his human nature is lower than angels. So he has assumed our humanity. That's what he says. You made him for a little while lower than angels but you have crowned him with glory and honor right? By suffering death and uh, uh, crucifixion. Jesus Jesus has obtained that salvation and God the Father has put everything in subjection under him, right? Through his suffering, he was exalted. So the exaltation through suffering is the heading of the passage, right? So here we read, you have crowned him with glory and honor, putting everything in subjection under his feet, right? So we meditated on all of that and later we have seen that uh, I'll proclaim your name to my brethren in the midst of the congregation. I'll praise you and again I'll put my trust in him. And again here am I and the children God has given me. So this, this refers to Isaiah chapter 8. So Jesus remained faithful when he was tested. He remained faithful to his father. So he has given us a model. He is a role model to follow. right? When he was tested he never sinned. We saw in Matthew chapter 4 he is facing all the temptation. Devil tempted him in all possible ways. But when he was tempted when he was tested he remained faithful even at the death right he remained faithful he knew that he is going to die he knew that he has to suffer all this but he remained faithful to his father he remained obedient to his father through his obedience and through his death he obtained salvation for mankind because of his suffering and death he ex he exalted the fallen humanity right because of that father has crowned him with glory and honor and put everything under subjection to him right then later we see that uh, Jesus is a faithful high priest so in many places we see that in the book of Hebrews many places we see that Jesus is the high priest but this is the first reference in the book of Hebrews here chapter 2 verse 17 Therefore, he had to be made like his brethren in every respect so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make expiation for the sins of the people. For because he himself has suffered and been tempted, he is able to help those who are tempted. So we see that Jesus is the new high priest and he has suffered. He has, he has suffered death. He has suffered pain. He experienced suffering. He experienced death. He experienced all the temptation. So as, a, as humans, uh, when we we, when we fa when we go through suffering he can understand uh, he can understand us because he himself has gone through all the suffering and pain so all that we have meditated so this is a very very beautiful passage about the incarnation of Christ so each verse has a very deep meaning so we meditated on each of the words so if you haven't listened to the classes just go back and listen to the classes so it will in increase our knowledge about God right so that's why I'm spending so much time and uh, uh, recording the video so it's a very beautiful passage about the incarnation of Christ why Jesus has come down as human and why he has what is the meaning of suffering right through after Jesus death and resurrection suffering has got a new dimension right many saints started embracing suffering right suffering has got a new meaning hmm? so we we meditated on all of that so just go back and uh, uh, listen to all the videos so there are 18 videos or 18 meditation one video 
video for one verse so you can go back and listen this is just a quick summary of what we have uh, meditated but you can uh, listen to the videos to get more details on that so with this i'll conclude today's meditation i will uh, just read hebrews chapter 2 it's a very beautiful chapter okay please listen to it carefully warning to pay attention therefore we must pay the closer attention to what we have heard lest we drift away from it for if the message declared by angels was valid and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation it was declared at first by the lord and it was attested to us by those who heard him while god also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles and by the gifts of the holy spirit distributed according to his own will for it was not to angels that god subjected the world to come of which we are speaking it has been testified somewhere what is man that you are mindful of him or the son of man that you care for him you made him for a little while lower than the angels you have crowned him with glory and honor putting everything in subjection under his feet now in putting everything in subjection to him he left nothing outside his control as it is we do not yet see everything in subjection to him but we see jesus who for a little while was made lower than the angels crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death so that by the grace of god he might taste death for everyone for it was fitting that he for whom and by whom all things exist in bringing many sons to glory should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through suffering for he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified have all one origin that is why he is not ashamed to call them brethren saying i will proclaim your name to my brethren in the midst of the congregation i will praise you and again i'll put my trust in him and again here am i and the children god has given me since therefore the children share in flesh and blood he himself likewise partook of the same nature that through death he might destroy him who has the power of death that is the devil and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong bondage for surely it is not with angels that he is concerned but with the descendants of abraham therefore he had to be made like his brethren in every respect so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of god to make expiation for the sins of the people for because he himself has suffered and been tempted he is able to help those who are tempted thank you god bless you all